This video is about cardiovascular system responses to exercise. A response to exercise is a short term change in physiological function. So by that, what we mean is something that happens when we exercise that then reverts back to a resting state afterwards. That's different to an adaptation. An adaptation is a change that occurs over a period of time, over the long term, uh, where the structure or the anatomy of the body or some part of the body changes pretty much permanently, uh, certainly over the long term. So we're looking at responses today of the cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system simply means the heart and the, and the blood vessels that carry blood around the body. How does that system respond when we exercise? So what are the short term changes in that system? So the first one to note is we have an anticipatory increase in heart rate even before we start to exercise. Before you've um, begun your warm up, for example, even before that, the body is already getting you ready to exercise. And one of the key ways it does that is by increasing your heart rate. So the sympathetic nervous system responds to the expectation of exercise in anticipation of exercise. One of the ways it does this is by releasing adrenaline into the system, which provides a fight or flight response, a physiological preparation for exercise. So the fight or flight response, which we've talked about in another video, is, for example, uh, a, an alertness. Um, it might be to do with dilation of the pupils or widening of blood vessels and those kinds of responses. But in this case, the heart rate already goes up before you've even started exercising. It might be while you're getting changed in the changing room or while you're walking out onto the pitch to start your warm up your heart rate has already elevated in anticipation. And that's something that reverts back afterwards, which is why it's a response rather than an adaptation. Secondly, um, in the exercise itself, the, the first response that we need to note is that we have an increased heart rate. So whereas anticipatory response, the heart rate goes up a little bit before we start to exercise. During exercise itself, the heart rate responds to meet the demands of that exercise. So as we know, the cardiovascular system is providing blood, oxygen and nutrients to working muscles. Um, it responds um, as closely as possible to the demands that are placed upon the body. So your resting heart rate would be around about 70 beats per minute. Um, somebody who had trained a great deal would have a lower heart rate than that. Um, but the increase in heart rate is sometimes called tachycardia, which literally just means fast heart. Those, the tachy means faster and cardia is to do with the heart, so a faster heart. And what happens is the medulla oblongata, um, which performs in this role, uh, performs the role of um, responding to carbon dioxide, um, senses an increase in carbon dioxide in the bloodstream. Where does that carbon dioxide come from? That carbon dioxide is a product of respiration. So as your muscles start to work harder, they begin to produce more carbon dioxide because it's a byproduct of respiration. It's a byproduct of the energy that's being produced. So the medulla oblongata sees that this carbon dioxide level has increased in the blood and sends a signal to the sinoatrial node um, which is part of, uh, essentially part of the heart, part of the um, conduction circuit within the heart, sends a signal to the sinoatrial node, the SA node, to increase the frequency of the signals that it sends. So the heart basically gets these electrical signals arriving more quickly um, and therefore contracts more regularly and that increases the heart rate. The next thing which is a related uh, related thing is that we have an increase in cardiac output. Cardiac output, you'll remember, is the total volume of blood ejected from the heart in one minute. So if the stroke volume goes up, that's the amount of blood that is ejected with one beat, with one single contraction, and also the heart rate goes up, those two things together mean that we have a significant increase in the volume of blood 
with the amount of blood that's been ejected from the heart in one minute and that's what we call cardiac output and we usually signify that with the letter with a capital letter Q. Uh, it's measured in litres per minute um, and there is a, as I've said, there is a significant increase in heart rate in particular. Stroke volume increases slightly but heart rate increases enormously and therefore those two things combined mean a much greater output um, of blood. And of course, the importance of that is it is the blood which provides the oxygen and the nutrients and also removes the waste products. So if we can send more blood around the body, we can do that more efficiently as we exercise. Next is increased blood pressure. So blood pressure is simply uh, the pressure caused by the volume of blood within the vessels pressing against the walls of the blood vessels. And we measure blood pressure um, both as systolic pressure and also diastolic pressure. Systolic simply means the highest level um, that pressure gets to in the cardiovascular system, um, usually measured um, most effectively um, near, uh, as near as possible to the aorta, which is where the highest pressure is, obviously in the arteries, and diastolic is the lowest pressure within the blood vessels. Normal blood pressure is about 120 systolic over 80 diastolic and you can see on the little picture there um, that the um, the blood pressure monitor shows what is normal blood pressure 120 over 80. Our blood pressure particularly the systolic pressure will increase significantly um, during exercise just in as a response in the short term um, and that increase in blood pressure comes from a stronger contraction of the heart um, which contracts more forcefully and therefore, as it sends more blood round um, through the cardiovascular system, a greater volume is going around. The pressure is naturally, therefore, going to increase. And like when you squeeze water out of a hose by putting your thumb over the end of it, um, the greater the pressure that you create, the faster the water will flow. Well, it's the same in the cardiovascular system. The greater the pressure that you can create from a strong contraction of the heart, the faster the blood will flow around the cardiovascular system. And that's again ideal because again the blood uh, is carrying oxygen and nutrients and removing waste products and that happens more efficiently. Um, finally we have redirection of blood flow. So when we exercise there are certain parts of the body that require um, more blood flow and other parts of the body that don't demand quite as much blood flow. Because naturally when we exercise, there is an increased oxygen demand, but specifically an increased oxygen demand in the working muscles. So if we can divert blood to the working muscles and away from those um, parts of the body that are not, um, that are less essential. So those less essential functions, like for example, the gut, we can divert blood away from the gut by constricting the vessels within the gut. So that would be vasoconstriction. So less blood goes there and opening up the vessels in the muscles so that more blood can flow to the muscles. So basically we are constricting blood flow to less essential functions and widening and opening up blood flow to more essential functions. Basically by that I mean the working muscles. And again, the point of that is we are providing oxygen and nutrients and removing carbon dioxide and waste products like lactate um, away from the muscles. Um, and we're focusing on those during the course of the exercise. So those are the cardiovascular system responses to exercise. Hope that's been helpful.